once you wire your patch bay in, you don't want to have to go add or, or take things away. Wire the bay in so that you can grow into the bay. In there, I think I've mentioned this to you, in there, let me show you right now. In there, I have patch bays, four of them in there. All right, now, okay, look at this. This is a patch bay. Coming to here is mix out left and right. My mixer has two plugs. It's got a left output going to the main, uh, the main output to the tape recorder and a right output going the main output to the tape recorder. That's how I go to record my stuff when I'm mixing it left and right to the tape recorder. Okay? Now, it wants to be normal to your mastering machine, meaning what, do I, what is going to be my ma I have a DAT machine now that's the master machine. Well, we used to have the two tra reel to reel two tracks that were the mastering machines. Matter of fact, I have a couple of those. But right now, I'm going to normal this to DAT one in, left and right, so that now my mastering tape recorder just automatically gets the signal from the output of my board. Now, the thing is, is that I have a cassette deck, I have a two-track reel-to-reel, and I have VCR with audio left and right in, video cassette recorders. But what about those? I mean, don't I need to get left and right to those someday? Well, what if I was doing a session where I was making a, a master dat, and I wanted a cassette backup so I could listen to it myself in the car on the way home. But also, I was making the master deck of a track and I wanted to put it over on locked with the video recorder so that we could just see the, the demo video of the music that we just wrote with picture tonight when we go home. See what we want to do tomorrow. Well, that's my video machine needs the signal, my cassette machine needs the signal, and my dat machine needs the signal. And I only got one mix out. You follow? So in that room right there, I have a DAT number two in left, right, uh, cassette one and cassette two, two track one and two track two, and VCR one and VCR2. I have all these two tracks. First of all, I, I have two VCRs, but I don't have two cassettes and I don't have two two tracks, but I may. At the time I put that in about five years ago, I thought I, I, I had three, two, three big two tracks. I was going to hook them all up, I thought. So what I said, well, when I'm wiring the bay, I'm going to wire it in so that all of those machines have the signal, and the machines that I haven't bought yet will be able to get the wire out of the floor, put the plug on the end, and plug it in, and it'll be right in the patch bay. What I really did to make this happen was I wired this left to there, to there, 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 and there. Oh, let me give you the rights. The rights are all wired like that. Left and right are all wired like that, correct? Do you see that? And now all of these are normaled. So I took my one left output, I duplicated it eight more times, normaled them down to the device's inputs. So now I have all of the signal duplicated up here on the top, and all of that left and right is going to all those machines, so at any time I just go hit record and that signal is there. If right in the middle, hey, throw a cassette in quick, let's catch it, boom, record it's there. I don't have to patch, I don't have to do anything. So there's another little convenience that the way I wire my patch bay allows me to have that. If without a patch bay, how would I take and make a DAT, a cassette, and a VCR recording at the same time? You know what I would have to do? I would have to put the signal into the DAT machine, go to the back of the DAT machine, take the DAT machine output, put it into the cassette, go to the back of the cassette machine, take the cassette output, put it in the VCR, and the VCR would get the worst degraded signal because it had to go through all the electronics to get to it. More noise, more poo. No, 
give me the straight signal right out of the mixer, the same signal this guy's getting, all those other two tracks are getting. But you need to make a flow chart, you know, of what's going to go where. The flow chart is something like this. So I have a mixer, I have a box, I call it the mixer. I have another box, I call it the, the recorder. I have another box, I call it the, the, the reverb unit and the delay unit and the whatever. And you, oh, I want the, the mixer's outputs to go into this. I want the mixer's two track to go to, the, uh, left and right out to go to the two track. So just draw your boxes, label each box as to what equipment you have in there, and then start drawing lines from the output of this to the input of that. And so that now you've got a clear picture of everything that you've got to hook up. And then just go hook it up. And leave room to grow. Because I don't want to get in that bay again. I'll wire the wire into the bay, and if I'm not using it, tape the end and let it lay in, un coiled under the bay or in the floor or something. There's a bunch of wires waiting for devices under the floor in there. So we never have to take that patch bay apart, ever. It's, it, all of the 96 points on each bay are wired, if, but if it's not filled, it's laying in the floor waiting, and the wire's long enough to go to the other end of the room, because you don't know where it's going to be, that thing that you want to someday put in, you know. <laughs>